must be recorded for time and eternity through Isaiah that I will give you this sign, you plural, all the house of David, all the twelve tribes of Israel. Is anyone with me? Now, he's saying in verse 14, and I'm going to read it for you in the Hebrew, Hineha alma yara v'yoledet ben v'yikra shmo Emmanuel. Okay? Let me just read it to you just to be sure that I quoted it correctly. Okay. Verse 14. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, how do we get to Yirmiyahu there? The Ba Yirmiyahu. Lachem yiten Adonai hu lachem ot. Therefore Yahweh will give you a sign. Hine ha'alma. Here the ha'alma. And remember those pronunciations. Ha'alma. The maiden. Hara. Ve'yoledet ben va'ikrat shemo Emmanuel. Two words. Emmanuel. Are you with me? Now, the traditional Jews, the anti-missionaries, those like Rabbi Steve Bergson that I just finished debating with last week in Knoxville, say, oh, no, no. This is not talking about the Messiah being born of a virgin. This is talking about King Ahaz's son, Hezekiah. Oh, is that, is that who he's talking about? No. You're going to have to know this because if you don't, you're going to be confronted with this. Right. And it's not if your Ephraimite or Jewish friend converts to traditional Judaism, it's when. Right. When they're approached. Everyone you know, keeping and living for Torah, will be approached, right. will be solicited. If you're in the church, they leave you alone, more or less. Although even that's starting to change. But if you're keeping Torah, and you love Yahweh, and you keep Shabbat, and you keep kosher, they are, you are targeted, whether you're a Jew or an Ephraimite, you will be targeted for conversion to rabbinical Judaism that denies Yeshua as the only way of salvation. Are you with me? And you need to prepare yourself how to answer, how to give an answer to every man who asks you for the reason of the hope that lies with in you. Turn to your neighbor and say, it lies within you. And so Yahweh says, look, I will give you a sign. The maiden, the Hebrew word is Alma, this message part two, the great <coughs> Alma controversy. Mm -hmm. yes. Part two, preaching for a few hours, the great Alma controversy. Yahweh says, look, look, who, is he talking to King Ahaz or House of David? He's talking to the House of David. How many tribes? All twelve. He's saying... The maiden will conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. Now, look how slick the anti-missionaries are. They try three approaches. None of them are valid. They're all invalid. They don't, none of them make sense. But they are planning and, and hoping and, and, and counting on the fact that you cannot defend your faith. Okay? That's what they're hoping for, that you cannot defend your faith. And what they do is they're going to try three tricks, and I'm going to give you all three tricks so you are prepared. Because if you can prove Yeshua was born of a virgin, the rest of the good news is cake. Everything flows out of that. But if he was not born of a virgin, his blood is no different than your blood or my blood or the blood of a, of a porcupine or a crocodile. And therefore his blood is not set apart and holy. So the whole question of the blood, the whole question of redemption, the whole question of salvation, the whole question of forgiveness rests upon his blood being pure and holy. And the only way his blood can be pure and holy it is if, it's born, if he was born of a virgin. Not the Immaculate Conception. We don't believe in the, that Mary was sinless so that she could be a co-redemptress. We don't believe in the Immaculate Conception. We do believe in the virgin birth. Now here's what the anti-missionaries are doing. And I'm going to give you a little background. Go back to Yeshayahu 7.1. Let's, let's see the context in which Yahweh gives this sign to the house of David. It came to be in the days of Ahaz, son of Yotam, son of Uzziah, sovereign of Aram, sovereign of king of Judah, and Retzin, sovereign of Syria, Aram, and Pekah, son of Ramalia, son of Israel, went to Jerusalem to fight. The confederacy, listen, the alliance between Ephraim, Israel, and Syria coming, warring militarily, a military what? Alliance or confederacy against Judah, and Ahaz is shaking in his boots. Turn your neighbor and say, he's shaking in his boots. He's frightened. He's scared. Now I'm going to show you how to properly interpret Isaiah 7.14. Once you can defend your faith with Isaiah 7.14, you can push the anti-missionary where he belongs in a closet somewhere in, um, in, in the Congo. 
But you can't lock the anti-missionary in a closet and deprive him of, 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 of sustenance until he comes to his senses unless you know the background of what's going on in Isaiah chapter 7. Yeah. Now, verse 2 was reported to the house of David. Aram, or Syria, has set up camp in Ephraim. And his heart was moved. The heart of Judah was moved. Yahweh said to Isaiah, verse 3, Isaiah 7, 3, Go now, Isaiah, Yeshayahu, meet King Ahaz, the king of Judah, the wicked king, you and Sha'ar Yashuv, your son. Look at me. Who is Isaiah's son? Sha'ar Yashuv, which means a remnant shall return. Now, I want you to see, if you don't know who's present in this play, in this act, in this drama, you could fall for the bait of the anti-missionaries. And what's the definition of an anti-missionary? Anybody who's Jewish who tries to steal Yeshua's sheep and they don't believe in Yeshua. They may have a beard, they may be clean shaven, they may be a lawyer, they may be a doctor, or they could, but it doesn't matter. If they don't believe in Yeshua and they're Jewish and they, and they believe in stealing sheep from Yeshua, okay, and bringing them to Orthodox Judaism, which denies the blood of Yeshua, then you are dealing with an anti-missionary. Right. Are you with me? And all of you will come across anti-missionaries sooner or later. Now, so Yahweh says to Yeshua, take your son, what's the name of the son? Sha'ad Yeshuv. To the end of the channel of the upper pool, that's the, the Gihon Springs on the highway of the Lord of his field, so forth and so on. Verse 5, because Ephraim the, uh, Aram, if, and Ephraim and the son of Ramaliah have plotted evil, saying, let us go to Judah. Verse 6, tear Judah apart for ourselves. So what's the background of what's happening here is King Ahaz is freaked out. Are you with me? Yeah. And, and when you're freaked out, all of a sudden you can become righteous pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's freaked out. He's like real righteous. I won't tempt Yahweh. Isaiah says, Yahweh says, stop playing games. We're here to ask Yahweh. Uh, Yahweh says, Ahaz, I know you're wicked. I know your heart. I know you're in fear of your brother Ephraim who has confederated with Syria to destroy you, Judah. You, this is the background. And so Ahaz is so fearful and scared that all of a sudden he's a disciple. Isn't that how some, Yahweh got some of you? Yes. You were so scared, so frightened, didn't have a future, didn't have a job, didn't have hope, didn't have citizenship papers. You didn't know your next step. You didn't know your next meal. You didn't know your next shelter over your head. And so Yahweh got your attention through disrobing you of your own self-sufficiency. Yeah. Have you ever been disrobed out of your own self-sufficiency? Yeah. It's not an easy place to be in. No. Okay? Right? <coughs> Being naked. Yeshua said, you're, some, some, of you, some of you believers are rich, you, you think you're rich and you're affluent and you're well off and you've got your family act together. He says, but some, I see your heart, some of you are miserable, you're poor, you're blind, and you're naked. Yeah. Now watch this. So this is the background, now you know who's there. Okay, so what do we have there? We have Isaiah, right? We have, we have Yahyashuv, the son of, of, of Yeshayahu. And we have King Ahaz. And the three of them, what? Are going to act out the prophecy of the virgin birth. Yeah. But why is it so controversial? Because it is controversial. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called the great Alma controversy. Yeah. Okay. If Jews would believe that this Isaiah 7, 14 speaks of a virgin birth, you wouldn't have to witness. You wouldn't have to share. You wouldn't have to open the Bible. If they believed in the virgin birth, they would accept Yeshua as Messiah and the New Testament. They are able to discredit the entire Brit Chodeshah because they believe that this is not speaking of, a, of the Messiah, but they believe it has a different twist. Turn to your neighbor and say, a different twist. They believe it has a different twist. Now, who do we have Isaiah, Yeshayahu, we have Yashad Yashuv, a, a young boy of maybe two, three years old, he's young, and the king. Yahweh comes directly to the king and says, Ahaz, listen, I don't care how deep the request is, how high it is, I have a revelation that I gotta share with you, that I gotta deliver with you. It's important, it's crucial, it is paramount to the coming of the Messiah. Ask away, just ask. I know you're wicked and your heart is not right with me, but just ask away. And Ahaz says, I will tempt Yahweh. Don't you know me? I keep Torah, even though I only, only, I only eat pig once a day. I only worship Zeus and Deus once a week. Hello? I only bake raisin cakes to the Queen of Heaven once a month. 
He ain't no righteous man. And stop trying to play that he's righteous because Yahweh knows his heart. 